Hi, welcome to Veggie 360. My name is Linda and I'd like to welcome you to our garden. Today is July 9th and I'd like to take you on a tour so you can see what's growing in the early summer garden. For those of you who are new to this channel, the focus is on growing year-round in small spaces, yet achieving maximum yield. I've included a link to a video in the description below where I talk about how to get the most out of your garden through careful planning. As we go through the tour today, I'll talk about some of the tips and techniques for maximizing harvest in your garden. Hope you enjoy the tour. This is our cattle panel trellis. We have red noodle beans growing on this, interplanted with some cucumbers. Lots and lots of blooms on the cucumbers, as well as some baby cucumbers. And we've already had our first harvest. We'll probably have this one for dinner tonight. Very, very prolific variety. I only wish I could remember what variety this one is. When I saved the seeds, I couldn't remember what it was. So this variety is named Good Cucumbers 2021. All right, we have determinant tomatoes growing on the other side of the tunnel as well as two varieties of peppers. Beets are almost done for the season. And then planted on each side, we have uh, sweet potatoes. Now this part of the garden tends to be shadier it doesn't get quite as much sun because we have the screened in porch up above and this is the south side of the house and so the um, afternoon sun is shaded so this is a nice microclimate to keep more of the cool weather season crops growing a little bit longer uh, <laughs> and then we also have some day neutral strawberries we'll be harvesting that strawberry shortly it's a great place to do uh, beets further into the season, as well as collard greens, assuming they're not attacked by the harlequin bugs and cabbage worms. Something has really been going to town on these leaves. Cabbage worms here. Now we've had lots of birds coming into the garden, so they've been doing a pretty good job controlling the cabbage worms. Um, I have the last crop of cucumbers that I just planted the other day. I planted this one a couple weeks ago, but I didn't get good germination in this part of the bed, so I replanted yesterday. Okra is a little bit slow getting started this year because we had um, some of the cool weather crops in this early now this bed is on the back side of the cattle panel trellis. It's on the north side. So it is more shaded. Uh, the plants in this bed are more uh, shade tolerant plants and I can get away with planting beets later on in the season uh, because it doesn't get quite as hot. Same thing for the collard greens. Now peppers, I'm kind of skating on thin ice with them because I don't think they really get enough sunshine over here but I ah, thought I'd give it a try something's really eating at the leaves I think maybe some pill bugs I've seen quite a few of those in the garden now the kohlrabi this is the last of the kohlrabi in the garden um, we'll be planting the fall crop of kohlrabi in, at the end of the month the lettuce I should have pulled up already. This is Merlot lettuce and it's probably pretty bitter at this point as well as the thyme. Now I want to show you the calendula. This is the third year in the garden for this calendula. I have it planted on each side of this bed so that when you come in the garden you get this stellar show of calendula. It's beautiful, beautiful color, but 
since I planted this three years ago, I cover the beds and it's actually overwintered very nicely, but I think next year I'll just go ahead and plant some fresh ones because the flowers are a little bit spindly, not quite as showy. Now going on the back side of this, on the south side of the cattle panel trellis, we have a dwarf tomato and I have let some cilantro go to seed. I'll be pulling up this kale, dazzling blue kale. Look how tall this is. Oh my goodness, it has been so tasty. We're harvesting the last of the beets and another dwarf tomato. I'm in process of clearing out this bed. I've had uh, mustard spinach, Florida broadleaf spinach, as well as different varieties of kale and broccoli growing in this bed. So I've replaced it with some peppers, uh, some kang kong. Uh, if you're not familiar with kang kong, another word or another name is hollow green or water spinach, uh, as well as some sweet potatoes. I'll be putting in some green beans in here as well this weekend. The leeks I have growing on each side of the rosemary. The leeks this year in the garden have just not done well. I have been so disappointed. I think I'll give them a rest. Here's our second cattle panel trellis. We have 10 tomato plants growing on this trellis, five on each side. With the square foot spacing, we have one tomato per square foot in which I have pruned them to either one stem or two stems. I'm trying a, a double stemming system this year. We'll see how it works. Now in this portion of the garden, we have Belinda's Dream Shrub Rose. This I planted in honor of my dad. Earlier in the season, I had a horrible problem with black spot. I have repeatedly treated it and I think I've gotten on top of it because now we've got some new growth and we're going to have some beautiful, beautiful roses coming on. Um, between the black spot and the thrips, this poor plant really struggled this year. I need to go in and finish pruning out the, the dead stuff. To the right of the tomatoes, we have bush beans. The variety is dragon tongue. And you can see how pretty this is. It's, it's a yellow bean that has black speckles or striations on it. It's very, very tasty and extremely prolific. I believe I have two squares growing with these green beans. And then right beside the tomato, we have some basil. Ah, it's starting to go to seed. I have not been harvesting the basil enough. Now planted at the base of the tomatoes is marigold. For some reason this year, I did not get good germination on the marigold seeds. I have friends that have had the same problem. I got only one seed germinated on this side. Everything else failed to germinate. So today I'm going to be uh, replanting marigolds. It'll probably be late in the season, but that's okay. Now we also have had early blight on the tomatoes. I've been spraying a uh, baking soda spray. I'll include the recipe for that in the link in the description below. But bottom line, the best thing to do with early blight is to trim the lower leaves. We have used mulch on the ground in order to help minimize the amount of splash up from the ground whenever it rains. Uh, we use a drip irrigation system, so we don't have to worry about splash up when we water. It's just simply the rain that has caused this. So we literally prune the bottom leaves from the tomatoes and then I spray repeatedly. Now this past week, it has rained every single afternoon or evening this week. And so we've just, whenever I spray this baking soda spray, <laughs> have to do it every day because sure enough I spray it in the morning and then by the afternoon or evening it gets washed away but uh, you can see the tomatoes are doing extremely well we're going to be having lots and lots of tomatoes coming on 
We have an ox heart tomato that went in late along with indigo blueberry that uh, also went in late and it's getting shaded from the rose bush. Pepperoncini pepper, collard greens that's going crazy along with some sweet potatoes. This morning I put in some jade bush green beans Uh, with the high temperatures that we're having right now and the ample rain, like what we're getting right now, they should germinate very quickly. Put in some more Kang Kong, and we have different varieties of peppers, red and orange peppers, as well as some grilling peppers. I'm gonna have to tie the tomatoes up because, again, the wind blew that one down. I'll be putting in uh, some of the cool season crops here shortly. I've left several of these squares empty intentionally so that I can start my cool weather, my fall garden soon. I'll be starting for the fall garden. I'm gonna be playing around with what works best, starting seeds indoors versus going ahead and direct sow outside. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> the race is gonna start in a couple of weeks. So we have some more green beans here, some more um, dragon tongue and marigolds, zucchinis doing really well. I did have some squash vine bore damage, so I had to go in and with an X-Acto knife, I cut the stem, removed the bore, and uh, closed the stem back up, covered up with soil. And this will actually take root and do quite well. I see lots of blooms coming on and some baby zucchini. So this will be just fine in spite of the surgery that I did. Um, <laughs> this is my cheat sheet so that I know what to plant where. With a garden this big and the square foot method, lots of squares, it's too hard to keep things straight, particularly for gar garden planning purposes and for crop rotation purposes. I like to write things down and keep track of things this way. So, this is my garden in early July. This is my happy place. I really, really enjoy spending time in the garden. What a way to start the day and what a way to end the day. Another view taken through the cattle panel trellis. I just love, absolutely love at how lush this is this year. I have not had to fertilize. All I have done is use compost each time I do a shovel full of compost each time I plant a square. And it has just done so well for the garden. It's just amazing. I love it. Hope you enjoyed watching. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the no notification bell next to it so that you don't miss any new videos when they come out.